Ye is a rural town of around 1,200 people located in the Shire of Murrindindi just over 100 kilometres to the northeast of Melbourne. Surrounded by rolling green hills, it nestles in the valley of the Goulburn River. Because of its proximity to the metropolitan area, Ye has a comfortable mix of modernity and the pleasures of rural living. Palm trees cluster around the war memorial. Nearby, the local men and women play bowls on a sunny afternoon. The bowls club is right at the centre of town, next to the toilet stop appreciated by tourists and truck divers alike, and also to the central reservation, a wide strip of grass and trees. Old buildings such as the post office remain, a reminder of the town's history. They may carry the weight of years, but their red brick facades have an enduring style. The main toilet facilities serve Ye's many tourists, especially those who arrive by the busload on their way to the snowfields in the northeast. Originally considered unattractive, it inspired the community to establish the Toil Art Project. Many people, old and young, participated over the course of a year, putting their mark into the beautiful handcrafted clay tiles that adorn the external walls of the building. The Central Reservation is a space to enjoy the food you bought, to read a book or just rest. With its peaceful air and views of the town hall and shops, the automatic watering system ensures that the grass is always green and lush, perfect for bare feet. The cafes are just over the road. Dogs are welcome, rubbish bins help keep the area clean and there's plenty of seating for those afternoons when it's nice to just watch the people go by and enjoy the trees reaching for the sky. We do like welcoming visitors, and the Great Victorian Bike Ride is one of the best opportunities to say hello to over 5,000 cyclists who drop into camp for one night only. It's hard work for the many volunteers, but the last two visits by the cyclists in 2006 and 2010 saw Ye voted as the most welcoming town on the ride. This time around the camp was in the area surrounding our historic railway station which became a bustling metropolis for 24 hours. And you wouldn't like a baked potato? No, he doesn't. He doesn't like a baked potato at the moment. Local community groups were able to raise much needed funds by selling food and services, and some of the businesses in town had their busiest day and night of the year. Today it's raining, and like many farm-oriented communities, there's a sense that all's right with the world when there's water falling from the sky. It's business as usual, and that includes the Ye Urban Fire Brigade, staffed entirely by local volunteers. Skilled in more than just firefighting, they also turn out to road accidents, and today's wet roads see them departing in a hurry. Situated at the junction of a number of major roads, the town has a hospital, ambulance and helipad to deal with anything that might arise. The Yay sale yards host regular cattle sales. The influx of buyers and sellers means a day's good business in the hotels, cafes and restaurants in town. The sale yards are a growing business, with construction of a roof scheduled to start later this year. That's a big project, but as you can see, a bit of cover would be most welcome. The rituals of the sale are familiar to farmers, but to many townsfolk these days, the language is a complete mystery. Cattle, sheep, goats and alpacas are a common sight on properties around Ye, but when it floods, the fields become more suitable for ducks. The local rivers are popular with fishermen. This is the Goulburn River at the Gingin Bridge, just outside town. With minor flooding caused by the recent rains, the water is high and fast. I don't think anyone will be fishing today. The award-winning Ye wetlands are situated on 32 hectares of Crown land between two branches of the Ye River. Since formal management arrangements were established in the year 2000, the Wetlands Committee and enthusiastic volunteers have attracted funding and in-kind support to plan and implement some $650,000 of improvements, including boardwalks, a swing bridge and signage. This year, construction will start on the Crowning Glory, 
the Wetlands Interpretive Centre, which will also house Ye's new Visitor Information Centre. Being ephemeral wetlands, they're often relatively dry. With good rains they can become quite wet, but usually not to this degree. The country market recently moved from High Street to the historic railway station. The market was moved because the Goulburn River High Country Rail Trail, a 134km cycling, walking and horse riding trail, will be completed by the end of the year and will pass by the railway station, bringing a constant flow of new visitors to town. The children aren't used to having water lying around, but they've quickly learned what puddles are for. The market is a social event, as much as a chance to browse local products. Farmers from the wider area sell their crops, but excess fresh fruit and vegetables grown by local people can also find their way here. There's something mesmerising about the colour of fresh vegetables, and it's great to have such a wide range to choose from. You can even engage the stallholders in conversation about their beans. Even the tubs of fruit are too beautiful to ignore. Look at those tomatoes! The Good Shed Gallery is the building on Platform 2 at the railway station. On wet market days it offers a protected space for stallholders and shoppers alike. But at other times this building hosts weddings, family gatherings, workshops, parties, meetings and each year at Easter there's a special exhibition of local art. You can see that crafts are important in Ye. Traditional skills like knitting, quilting and even spinning of the local lamb's wool and alpaca wool are very popular here both with the people who do the work and the people who buy it. There's so many uniquely creative people around Ye. These garments are vibrant evidence of that and the market gives them exposure to a growing group of enthusiastic buyers. Today, local councillor Sally Abbott-Smith is creating a garden at the future site of the Wetland Centre. What's special for me about Ye is that it still has retained a rural feel as a town and yet it's so close to Melbourne. So you can kind of get both, the, without having to live in the big city, you can get the benefits of being able to live in a rural town but still having access to it. How long have you lived in Ye? All my life, with a little hiatus of about 10 years, when mm. I went to see the world. How did you find growing up in Yale? Good. Good. At the time, I couldn't wait to get out of here. Because I had stars in my eyes to want to do other things. But in retrospect, I had a very fortunate childhood. So I entertained myself. I had my pony. I used to go on adventures with my pony. I liked sort of uh, writing essays. I liked doing schoolwork. I kind of learned to entertain myself. I had to. Yeah. Because my mother said that's always a good virtue to know how to entertain yourself. Because yeah, my true. parents were milking cows twice a day, so I had a lot of time by myself. So I would entertain myself and I would go off on adventures and go cross country and do all sorts of things. I would draw and paint. Well, the benefits I think is, is knowing everyone. That's sort of a nice thing. For years after I left here and lived in Sydney, it was so nice to come back and know it was like it was in a bubble. It was like the town was in a bubble. It was like it had never changed. You knew everyone that you went, walked down the street. You know, that, that was the lovely thing about it. The visual arts are popular in Ye, with many local artists working in a variety of media. There's a community gallery in town at one of the cafes, and only a few doors away we have a commercial gallery that's been attracting an impressive calibre of artists since it opened last year. Much more established, the annual Rotary Art Show is now in its 26th year. It's a huge show, only just managing to fit within the Shire Hall. The Yay Rotarians have developed the show's profile such that it attracts entries from artists all over the state, and offered over $6,000 in prizes this year. There's also the smaller, but very popular, Easter show at the Good Shed Gallery. And in recent years, the Yay Camera Club's annual photographic exhibition has gone from strength to strength. At the inaugural Skytefest Day, celebrating skateboarding and kites, 
Rob the Kite Man ran workshops that used kites as an artistic medium and a great way for families to get outside and get fit. What I'm doing, I'm going to put your arms on. We're going to start getting everything ready. That goes into there like that. Mind you, there's plenty of other ways for people to get exercise around town. The Yay Tigers field numerous teams for Australian rules football as well as netball. There's cricket in the summer and the Water Tigers swimming team dives into the pool as soon as the warm weather arrives. The tennis club is popular, as is the golf club, and some people are happy to energetically walk the streets of town while enjoying the scenery. And for those people who just like seeing others exercise, Yay's Racetrack hosts a number of country horse racing meets each year. I arrived in Yay over 12 months ago, and it was the actual ambience of the uh, city, of the township, mm -hmm. and certainly the very much the community um, aspect of Yay. Threw me yes. to the place, and uh, I've never looked back. Sorry about it. I like little towns, and it struck me that there's a lot of local production and local produce. I was looking forward to visiting again. Oh, that's great. And I love the wetlands that you have here. I think that's a wonderful aspect. These little towns are so much more community-centred somehow. People um, yeah, have a sense of belonging more in this small town. And I think you're probably onto a good thing thinking about keeping it small. The Zelman Symphony, a 60-piece amateur orchestra, played in Yay to great acclaim in 2009 and 2010. People in Yay enjoy their music, it seems. All kinds of music. The Rotary Music Hall is a variety event that's been running for many years. The Welsh Choir have performed here. There are organ recitals on the Scots Church's wonderful instrument, regular community singing and open mic events, performers at the Yay Country Market and at the annual Autumn Fest. For younger people, the Freezer Group brings contemporary acts to town, and this year we even had the cast of the show Hairspray performing here. And to cap all that off, the Yay Old Time New Vogue Dance Group enjoy music with their feet on the first Saturday of each month. The Murrindindi Shire's youth team consists of a youth coordinator, youth participation development officer and two freezer workers, providing services to young people who live, work or study within the Shire. The inaugural Dindi Fest this year offered music, skating and cycling, street artwork and more. The skate park in Yay was designed by the world-renowned Tony Hawk and it's obvious from these scenes that there's hours of practice going on here. The fun wasn't just for the skaters though. Who could stay on that bull? The Flower and Power Labyrinth offered a gentler side to the Dindy Fest. The project, initiated by Berry Street Family Care, saw nearly 900 school children in Yea and elsewhere in the Shire create flower artworks featuring written insights and the students' faces in the centre. Visitors were encouraged to walk the labyrinth and read the writings. Children in a rural area enjoy opportunities that aren't available in cities, and the scale of the Flower and Power project demonstrates the commitment of local educators to helping our kids see the world differently. You need to go to the shops and you need, you need to go to the post office and you need to go to the bank and you need to go to the You do all that in about 15 minutes. I know, that's in Melbourne, what you have to live about half a day. I know. So. And, and not only that, but you can park outside each one of those buildings. It's free. <laughs> and, the, and Anthony will probably carry your parcels out and put them in the boot for you. <laughs> I love the, the physical environment, so what it actually looks like, especially when you drive, when you drive into Ye and the gorgeous front, um, the plantation and Main Street, things like that, but also the community feel and the people and knowing people and um, strong friendship connections that I've got here. People, we all went away to uni and then we, lots of us came back for job opportunities back here. So we've got quite a strong group of friends who live back in Yay. So many benefits of Yay. There are lots of places, lovely places to eat. There are great schools. There are great opportunities. There's the great community feel, great networking. I think it's very safe, but I think it's also it comes back to that community feel where everyone 
most people know people, yeah. so you know you know you know so and so's kids. Obviously, there are people there looking out yeah. out for kids and looking out for other people. That's the beauty, I guess, of a small town. But you know, everyone's always friendly and says hello. And very pleasant. On the right cheek, <laughs> yuck yuck, yeah, and he thought to himself. The early learning is fun, or ELF program is run by Berry Street throughout the Shire. Starting in Yea in 2005, Elf Day is when children dress up as their favourite book character and come to High Street, where adults, also dressed up, read books to them. It's a fun day with a serious message that literacy starts with children being encouraged to read books early. The commitment of so many community volunteers shows that Yea is a place where the village is truly willing to participate in raising its children. My bear cave because we want people when they come to Yay to have a taste of the area. Uh, fruit and veggies from the area. There's, we've got a really terrific local organic orchard that um, free ranges chooks and geese underneath it. And so the eggs that we use in all of our cooking and our breakfasts all come from that orchard. Um, then as they they grow lots of other veggies and so on and then as they become available we then incorporate them into what we serve in the restaurant. The other thing that happens quite a lot is that people from their home gardens have excesses at time and so they'll bring those in. We'll either use that in on the menu or as part of the community meal which happens once a week. Um, so that food is used both in that and in the restaurant. And then also if there's a big excess of it like zucchinis this week, there's a basket of zucchinis that go out and that people can come in and just take food home for their own use. Are you a local or are you a visitor to the town? I'm a local. Okay, so can you tell me what it is you like about this community or this town? Um, about the community is it mainly it's people that I, I find them extremely friendly and always happy to engage in a conversation when you're walking mm. um, down the street. And the town itself is just, I find it colourful. Lived here? No, I've lived here for about 10 years. 10 years. So, what is it that attracted you to the town? The country atmosphere. So what brought us to Ye? We originally lived in Kinglake, which wasn't far away. Pollination of the trees, and then you know, it was very difficult because of the damp weather up in Kinglake. And we feel really lots of trees. So, we moved here for better climate. The streetscape, the, the shops, uh, the atmosphere, country hospitality. Fresh um, white flesh peaches um, mixed with blackberries, once again out of Joe's garden, and they were all just sliced up and made into a fruit salad and they were served with a bit of ice cream. The whole point of the community meal is to get people together. And then the idea is that later on, when they meet one another in the main street or in the supermarket or wherever else, there's that person there that they got to know the other night when they had sat down and had a meal with them. So when they come to the community meal, they meet people that are older or younger with kids or grown up kids, and, and it just gives people that sense of family. This town has it's got something a little bit special. We've been here for two years, and we've been welcomed with open arms, and my husband joined Rotary, and he's loving every minute of that. I'm loving coming down here on a Wednesday night and helping out with the community dinner. <laughs> but I think it, you're not anonymous. You're really not. No, no, no. Are you? No. People, and people do know you. Even Yay has plenty of lovely old buildings, such as the Scots Presbyterian Church. And just over the road is the railway station, built in 1889. It's one of the best remaining examples of Gothic-style stations in Victoria. It was in poor shape until Friends of the Yay Railway volunteers brought it back to brilliant life. The Sacred Heart Catholic Church was built in 1902 to replace the original timber church building. The adjoining presbytery was built in the 1890s, while down the hill is St Luke's Anglican Church. Built in 1869, it's still going strong with services every week. These and many other historic buildings give Yea its distinctive character. And looking down the hill we can see the biggest, the Shire Hall, rebuilt 1894 with clocks added just a few years ago. This is the sort of yay day we really like. It's market day again and people are wearing red as a show of support for the rail trail. The atmosphere is festive but the speakers get a good hearing. 
People are starting to understand that the trail will bring more tourists to town and that's a good thing for our ability to survive and prosper. The spinners are spinning under the shade, balling up the yarn for sale or to knit garments. Stall holders are selling soy candles, olives, wine, cheese and more. They're doing a brisk trade. The locals are chatting, sharing a joke, enjoying the morning. And so, one final thought from Councillor Sally Abbott-Smith. You know, the message I would have for the future is really be sure of where your strengths are and try to, you know, keep those. The things that have been working for your families, look at those and try and, to, you know, strengthen them. And, and obviously there are good things that are coming past, but they should be measured up against what they might, you might lose. Mm -hmm. Embracing change is important because everything must evolve. But I guess it's always keeping an eye on the fact that you're not losing some of the really important things that you didn't have.